Welcome to Candlestick Chronicles, a 49ers podcast on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I am Kyle Mads, and I write about the 49ers over at NinersWire.com, part of the USA Today Sports Media Group. What? <laughs> that, that was harmonic. That was a good one. Was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, joining me right now, a person trying to get his life together, Chris Biederman. And <laughs> um, what what are we? Uh, lamb Chops, SGLambchops.com. Follow them on follow them on Instagram at SGLambchops. It is our favorite clothing brand. It is the official clothing brand of Candlestick Chronicles. They have dope hoodies, dope shorts. They got joggers, t-shirts, chains, hats, the works. Their new winter fall collection, really, really cool. Uh, it's a new t-shirt. It's new sweats, a new hoodie, and then the Letterman jacket, which I think is very, very dope. And I think I'm going to need it in my closet ASAP. I think I'm going to make the sweat shorts the official short of working from home. Uh, at I least love for, that for you. For Candlestick Chronicles. Yeah, I've just been, mm-hmm. just been rocking them. Um, I, I wear them a lot in the spring and, and even in the summer when it's not too hot. They're obviously like a thick, a thick sweat type material, but mm-hmm. they're shorts. Um, obviously, they have zippered pockets, but... Man, when you got the heater going in the house and, you know, you want you want something a little bit more substantial than the mess shorts ar- around the house. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you have to go outside, take the trash out or or walk the dog real quick. Um, the sweat yeah. shorts are a little bit warmer. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm calling it the the lamb chop sweat shorts, the official short it's big time. candlestick chronicles working from home and, and recording from the home office. That's big time. You can get your official work from home shorts today at sglambchops.com. And wait, there's more. Use promo code candlestick20 for 20% off your order. Sglambchops.com. Lamb chops, join the herd today. We are also sponsored by Cooperage Brewing. Shout out to the homies up at Cooperage. Go visit Santa Rosa, a great spot, underrated town. Uh, that's a town. I'm not going to call it a city. That's a town. Underrated town. I mean, town. It's, it's a city, but we're not going to be for Come on. this. Come on. Um, okay. <laughs> how tall is their tallest building? It's like 40 <laughs> feet. Come on. So, <laughs> no, Santa Rosa is great. Visit the city. Uh, great beer scene up there. But <laughs> the very best of that beer scene is Cooperage Brewing. Uh, the, the brewery is a great spot to hang out. Bring your dog. There's indoor seating, outdoor seating. Always a great food truck and a ton of great beer. You can try beer there. You can have a great time. And then you can order beer and it will be shipped directly to your house. And ordering a case of beer and having it show up at your front door is an all-time great life experience. So you should do that today at CooperageRowing.com. I've said it before on this pod, um, and and I'll repeat it here. You know of some of the bigger brand name breweries that are in Santa Rosa. A lot of people who brew beer at those other breweries and who are invested heavily in those other breweries, they go to Cooperage after work. And I think yep. that just speaks to that speaks to the quality of beer, the quality of vibes. Um, it's your favorite brewer's favorite brewery. Uh, can you imagine is, is how I would how I would describe it? Can you imagine if Patrick Mahomes was just like, yeah, no, I play for the Chiefs, but I like practicing with the 49ers. <laughs> that's what that's like. That's what it's, it's like. It's, it's Patrick Mahomes going home from practice to watch Brock Purdy film. Is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Which he should. He could learn a thing or two. Cooper, <laughs> Cooper's <laughs> Brewing. Uh, they make Candlestick Chronicles Hazy IPA. Of course, you can get a case of that right now at coopersbrewing.com. As long as you are 21 or over and in the state of California, we highly recommend doing that. Coopersbrewing.com. All right. Let's talk Niners Cardinals. I think we're going to get a first this weekend, Chris. What's that? I think we're going to get a shootout. I think we're going to get a lot of points. Yeah, I think the Niners are going to score a lot of points, but I think it's going to be close for once. Okay. Yeah. Make your case. Uh, Kyler Murray is back. The Niners have always had a little bit of trouble with Kyler Murray. Granted, they've never been really good. Uh, or they, they Most of the time when they had trouble with Kyler Murray was when they weren't great. Um, the 49ers are substantially better than the Cardinals now, but with Kyler Murray running around and James Connor and Trey McBride, their tight end, they, they have, uh, um, uh, not Wondell Robinson, but Rondell Moore, same type of receiver, same guy. Uh, but they have Rondell Moore as a playmaking receiver. Um, I know Marquise Brown and Michael Wilson are a little banged up. Michael Wilson, the, the rookie from Stanford had a big game against the Niners back in week four. 
he had a, a, a couple of touchdowns, but with Javarius Ward banged up and Javon Hargrave and it looks like Eric Armstead both banged up, probably not playing. Uh, Arizona coming off of their bye week. This just really seems like a spot where a Niners defense has been really locked in and really, really good. Just missing probably three key guys with with Ward and Armstead and, and Hargrave all out. It just seems like primed for a week where we're sitting here in the third quarter going, what defense is this? This is not. And, you know, San Francisco eventually wins something like like 31, 23 or something. Yeah, I, I, I don't hate that at all. Um, I think there's certainly an element of, uh, you know, human nature, let down potential possible for the mm-hmm. Niners, given, given what they've gone through the last few weeks. Um, mm-hmm. I also think the Cardinals coming off the bye is a really big factor. And the fact that you had Kyler Murray play for a month um, and then get the buy. I think his legs are going to be a little bit more underneath him. Um, he hasn't really had a great game since since coming back. Looking um, looking over the numbers, you know, his his high in, in his four games since coming back off the ACL tear. He had 256 passing yards November 26th um, against the Rams. His his high in uh, completion percentage so far came against Houston. He completed 67 percent of his throws in a loss. Um, Mm -hmm. November 19th. Uh, And in their last game against Pittsburgh, I know it was raining, um, but they won 24-10. I think Mitch Trubisky ended up playing in that game. Uh, Yeah, Could be wrong. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Um, That's correct. So there's certainly potential for a Kyler Murray breakout game. Like we know what he's capable. We've seen Kyler Murray give the 49ers Mm -hmm. fits, particularly with his mobility, like you mentioned. Um, so I definitely I, I definitely buy into that the idea of a shootout, particularly given the bye week um, and the fact that the 49ers are dealing with a pretty substantial amount of injuries on the defensive line in the secondary. Yep. Um, you know, you have you have a backup safety, you potentially have a backup at slot corner in addition to outside corner, um, with Traverius Ward being out. So, you know, with, with Ward being out, that forces Diamondor Lenore to play on the outside. Um, so you have Ambry Thomas and you have uh, Isaiah Oliver playing in the slot. I think Marquise Brown, could put his speed could provide some issues for the 49ers defense, particularly against Isaiah Oliver, who's, who's a better sort of like, I think Isaiah Oliver is a better, you know how they talk about nickel is like almost like a linebacker kind of like yeah. an extra linebacker. I think he's mm-hmm. better in those linebacker responsibilities than like than a guy who's covering a, a speedy receiver deep downfield. Yeah, I love his run fits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. just, just I the ability to stack and shed. It's just super <laughs> like super high quality from him. <laughs> love him against big slots for sure. <laughs> no, um as far as as far as Marquise Brown goes, he has been out with a heel injury. He didn't practice on Wednesday, but he hmm. was limited Thursday. And then Michael Wilson, who I mentioned, he's also been out, but he has been limited the first two days of this week as well. He's dealing with a neck injury. So, I mean, we may see a version of the Cardinals receiving core where there's no Marquise Brown and no Michael Wilson. And that would change the calculus a little bit because I don't think like, like Rondell Moore is a fine player, but Rondell Moore is a much better player when he is a, a uh it's a like a like a wrinkle it's a pretty substantial wrinkle he's he's good but when he's a wrinkle alongside wilson and marquise brown and not like a featured player with greg dorch you know so um that will that will change the calculus a little bit but i could definitely see the niners just in this spot arizona coming off a bye niners just finished up this three game gauntlet of seattle philly seattle and there's no Traverius ward no Armstead, no Hargrave, and all of a sudden you look up and, and Kyler Murray's having his best game of the year. It just se- it, it seems primed for that. Now, again, on the other hand, maybe the Cardinals just aren't very good and the Niners go win 31-10, to 10 and it, it looks like every other game from this year. Yeah, I, I tend to think like the Niners are going to win. They're just simply too talented and, and right. just much better. But mm-hmm. there's certainly, like I think, if, if they were to play this game seven times in these circumstances with the injuries and the fact Arizona's coming off the bye, I think five or six of those times, or I guess 
I meant seven out of ten is what I it it, it was close, like going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Like if they played ten times, yeah. seven seven times they like they end up, you know, kind of slugging it out, and then the Niners might pull away. Which is kind of what I thought would happen last week against the Seahawks, and, and that's sort of mm-hmm. what we got. Um you remember week four it was when I think it was Christian McCaffrey's best game of the season. He had mm-hmm. four touchdowns against Arizona. Um mm-hmm. I do think Arizona is probably coached like pretty well, right? For a team that's that's really struggling from a record standpoint. Like they're they're three and ten. Um two of two of their wins have come in their last four games. And I do think they're the type of like team that's struggling that can punch above its weight uh in any given week. I and I think coming off the bye um divisional foe home game nothing really to lose and kyler murray Mm -hmm. having a lot to prove in terms of like you know trying to sell the organization on being the guy and Mm -hmm. not trying to get replaced by a rookie draft pick um or even playing well just maybe to endear himself to another team if the cardinals want to entertain trading him um Mm -hmm. like i do think you're gonna get a pretty good kyler murray game and and as we've seen like his his athleticism and mobility. And I think just his quickness is really the thing that gives the 49ers the most issues. Like, you know, the Niners team speed defensively is as good as any defense in the league. And they can corral, they can corral athletic quarterbacks pretty well, but it's just like the quick twitch stuff that Kyler Murray does, like the Mm -hmm. sudden jitterbug movements that I think give him sort of uh, like make him unique in comparison to other quarterbacks. Like Jalen Hurts, the game plan was pretty clear for Jalen Hurts. It was stay in your running lanes, try not to, you know, have the field be imbalanced and, and allow him or the Eagles mm-hmm. opportunities to run quarter design quarterback runs to certain sides like the Bills did the previous week and that killed them. Um, Kyler Murray, even if you're in your running lanes or your rush lanes, I should say, Mm-hmm. He can still break outside. Like he's he's right. that type of athlete that he can still make those guys miss. Um, so you know, like a third and eight here and there, Kyler Murray scrambles and gets it, beats a blitz, mm-hmm. happens a couple times on a drive, and then all of a sudden you're giving up a touchdown. Like mm-hmm. he's he's just that type of player. And I do think this game's gonna mean a good deal to the Cardinals, I think, mm-hmm. at least initially. Like, I could see it definitely being close at halftime or close into the third quarter, and then the Niners ultimately outclassing them in the end. But I don't think it's going to yeah. be one of those games where the Niners just show up and, and win by 17 points. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a pretty tough game. And, and judging by the way that the Niners have approached a lot of these types of games, I don't think... I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of letdown potential, particularly with them knowing that they have to win out essentially to, to take the number one seed in the NFC. Yeah. I think we're going to learn a lot about where the 49ers are at just this week. Like if they come out and dominate, I'm going to feel really, really good. I like, it's hard to not feel good about where they're at. Um, given that they're the best team in the league, but it's hard to not, if they come out and win like 31 to six and just light it up, it'd be really tough to envision a scenario where they're not dialed in moving forward, where they do toss their helmets on the field and try and win. And that would, that would say a lot about where they're at now. Again, if they come out and lay an egg and they're, they're losing at halftime and they have to scratch and claw their way back in and they win by six at the end, then, you know, that's not awesome, but I don't, I don't it, like when you're trying to draw a path to, Hey, could they lose this game outside of the offense, turning the ball over two or three times? I just, I don't know if Arizona is going to be able to get the stops. Arizona's defense is not good. Yeah. And that's the, that's the big hang up for me and trying to be like, Oh, upset watch. I guess it's going to be close. I just don't, I don't think the Niners are going to lose. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, Josh Dobbs started that game week four. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of crazy to think about. So the Niners jumped ahead 14 nothing. Cardinals got a field goal. Niners made it 21 3. And then you had consecutive touchdowns um, for Arizona to make it 21 16 with four mm-hmm. minutes left in the third quarter. Um, so it did get it did get mm-hmm. close a little bit late in that game. 
and then you had a Christian McCaffrey touchdown and then a Brock Purdy um, touchdown that made it 35-16. But it was a five-point game in the end of the fourth quarter in a game that we kind of remember for Christian McCaffrey's four touchdowns. Um, but the Niners did need to play well. And Arizona, mm-hmm. with Josh Dobbs playing quarterback, did manage 362 yards. Um, mm-hmm. So, <laughs> man, crazy, crazy stat from that game. I mean, there are a few. That was Brock Purdy was twenty of twenty one in that game. I guess that was nuts. another. That, that was another memorable thing. Um, the Niners ran. Need to go back and look. They ran fifty three plays. Do you know how for, how many third downs they had? Wasn't it like six? They had three. They went three of five on third down. They had fifty. Oh my god. Plays. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, to to your point. I mean, I think the Niners offense is probably in a better place than it was now than it was mm-hmm. then. Mm-hmm. Um, Debo Samuel did not have a catch in that game. Correct. He had three Didn't runs for target. six. Yeah, three runs for six yards and wasn't targeted in the passing game. Obviously, Debo's been a huge factor for the Niners the last few weeks. So I would Bill expect Sneed that. Bill Sneed had a catch in that game. Yeah, so did, uh, so did J.P. Mason. Yeah, and Ron Bell. Yeah, George Kittle showed up on the stat sheet. I guess the 49ers made him active. Um, one catch, one target for nine yards. Good for him. <laughs> you like to see the so, little guy get a, get a target. Brandon, I caught all six of his targets for 148 yards. Christian McCaffrey, just... um, seven receptions on eight targets, 71 yards, and, and that crazy um, receiving touchdown he had sort of out of the backfield. Um, but... The point here is that as good as as efficient as the Niners were in that game, it was still a five point game at one point late in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. But the counterpoint to that is, well, Debo Samuel hardly did anything. Um, George Kittle had one yeah. catch. So yeah. if you look at how balanced the 49ers have been the last few weeks, you don't really worry a whole lot about the offense going up against that Cardinals defense. And I would, ex- if, if you're feeling optimistic about the game from a Niners perspective, the case is pretty obvious. It's just, they have no answers to the Niners offensively. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me, Shil Kapadia of, of the ringer wrote a picks column where he talks about the Niners Cardinals game. And he talks about how the Niners have from a success rate standpoint, have five of the 10 best offensive games of the season. And the rest of the NFL has five combined. And the Niners are the only team with a performance on that, on that, in that top 10 after week five. They had one in week seven and then in week 13. And that to me speaks to Kyle Shanahan just staying ahead of whatever defenses are throwing at the Niners. And I think that's why you kind of see the offense maxing out right now because defenses just don't really have a good idea on how to stop them. And I'm not sure that, and maybe the bye week and Jonathan Gannon figure something out, but I just don't know how any team, much less a, a, a team like Arizona, that's kind of in the middle of a rebuild goes about stringing together enough stops. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Can I give you a what's on tap presented by Cooper Brewing? Yeah, let's do it. And we're getting a multi touchdown brand and I game. Set his career well, high in receiving yards last week. I think this week you get another big game. He hasn't had back to back like really big games yet this year. And I think he's getting a couple of tutties. I think that's fair. Thanks. Um, that would certainly align with what I hope happens. Not to spoil my prize picks, but um a multiple touchdown, multiple touchdown performance from BA would be huge for for your boy over here. <laughs> um I I think I think it's going to be a one score game at one at one point in the third quarter. Like I think the Niners okay. are going to win, but I think or I, I should say at one point in the second half. Like I think it's going okay. to be one of those games where weird stuff happens, Niners take their foot off the gas. Um you know, that type of thing. Like that's I think it's certainly possible for the game to be a little bit closer, but ultimately we come out of it feeling like okay, that's that was another double digit win for the Niners. Um, but yeah. it did get a little, a little hairier than, than maybe we expected. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. So here's my, 
here's my if if I was a betting man, I would pick the Cardinals plus twelve and a half. And then I would parlay that with the alternate total of 50 and a half. And I like a like 30 so, to 21 Niners win. So you go over 50? Yeah, over 50 and a half. Got it. Yes. That's okay. what's on tap. I don't hate that. Presented by Cooper. I think we're going to have a really strong Brock Purdy game. I think mm. it's going to be a mix. Like the Eagles game was mostly about Yak right? Short passes, letting playmakers do their thing. Last week's game was the deep throws to, you had the deep one to Brandon Ayuk. You had the deep touchdown to Debo Samuel. You had the deep touchdown to George Kittle. Um, yep. I think you're going to get a little bit of everything. Like I could see a deep Kittle touchdown. I could see a Christian McCaffrey check down touchdown. Um, I think it's going to be sort of a, a mixed bag of, of a Brock Purdy performance um, as he continues to just get more comfortable and more confident. Uh, we've talked a lot about Brock Purdy MVP. I don't, I don't know that there's anything you can really do against Arizona. Maybe aside from like throwing for 400 yards and five touchdowns, that would bolter bolster his MVP candidacy. I think it's the type of game that's more likely to hurt his MVP candidacy if he doesn't. I agree. You know, if he throws a couple picks or the Niners lose or whatever. Um, but I think it's just going to be a steady really solid Brock Purdy performance where he's kind of doing a little bit of everything, not just like, you know, only throwing it deep or only checking it down. Or, you know, I think it's going to be a, a mixed bag and, um, and going forward through the end of the season. I think, you know, you, you'll want to see that like the Niners offense. I mean, the Niners offense is so multiple and varies what they do, but just mm -hmm. from Brock's perspective, like just to, Th show show all the different clubs that he has in the bag over the line, the final four weeks of the season. I do think, I think if you gave Kyle Shanahan a um, blueberry Red Bull and, and vodka, um, or three or four of them, he would. Tell you wouldn't you have that, to give him the blueberry Red Bull. He brings his own. <laughs> okay, I think he would. He would tell you that he wants Brock to win the MVP. And so, if there's yeah, a scenario where great. he can, where he can let Brock you know, do his thing a little bit. Um, I think Shanahan would, you know, he obviously he's not, he would never say anything like that. And like, you got to win mm. the game first. Right. But if he had his druthers, I think Shanahan would, wouldn't mind putting a little style points on one of these games in the last four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Or a few style. Points, right. All right. You want to get to prize picks? Let's do it. It's daily fantasy sports prize picks is the largest DFS platform in America. And it is so much fun. It is my new favorite way to watch sports uh, right now with the NBA season and NFL season crossing over. They are doing crossover specials uh, in their, in their specials league. It's right there at the top on the app where you can do like Travis Kelsey and LeBron James, uh, more or less than 10 and a half catches and made threes. And that's my favorite type of thing because I love combining sports with my picks. I do it in my prize picks entries all the time. And you should do the same by going to prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Use promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to $100. That is prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to $100. Chris, what do you got this week? Uh, I'm making all my money back this week. Um, it. it's been a rough go, but you know how I feel about the power plays. You only take big swings here in this household. Um, yeah, you had mentioned Brandon Ayuk. He is a demon play this week. He's got a little demon emoji icon next to, next to his picture on, on prize picks. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it, I think it's, there's something like a hundred X potential multiplier there. Um, yep. So I, I went with the I went with three demon picks because, like I said, Hell big yeah. swings only. You're on demon time. I'm on demon time. Absolutely. Um, Brandon Ayuk more than half a touchdown. Love that. He's just got to get in the end zone once. It's rush or receiving touchdown. So maybe he gets an end around. Um, maybe he just gets a deep ball. I, I think he's getting Cardinals, two receiving touchdowns. I, I'm. Hey, one one is all we need, but obviously we take two. Um, same thing with Debo Samuel, the fact that he was basically a non-factor in that week four game earlier this season and the way he's been playing recently, I think he has to get in the end zone. So, uh, give me more than half a touchdown for Debo. This one's just for you. Uh, Jake Love Moody, that. 
more than one and a half field goals. Like I said, like with with this being, you know, with me thinking that there's a potential for this to be a one score game in the second half at some point during it, I think there are going to be a couple red zone trips that don't result in touchdowns. Um, You haven't kicked a field goal since week 12. Yeah, exactly. Like the odds are they're going to be kicking field goals at some point. There's going to be a holding penalty. There's going to be a sack. There's going to be offensive pass interference. Something something's going to happen that's going to derail at least one um, red zone trip. So I have Jake Moody more than a field goal and a half. Uh, Marquise Brown, if he plays, Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, he's dealing with the heel issue. Another demon pick here. Uh, I'm going more than 0.5 touchdowns for Marquise Brown. I think if the Cardinals get on the board, it's far more likely to come from him because of the speed matchup um, that he he sort of presents the 49ers, or I guess the mismatch, I should say. Um, not that mm-hmm. the Niners cornerbacks are slow, but I just tend to think that they're more prone to give up um, give up plays to fast, quick receivers rather than the big physical guys. I think they match up better with those type sure. players. So um, that's a demon pick. So we got four. Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Marquise Brown, all more than half a touchdown each. So they all just have to get in the end zone for a power play. And then Jake Moody, more than one and a half field goals. Love it. I'm going, I'm riding the Brandon Ayuk touchdown. I'm going more than half a touchdown for him. Brock Purdy, I'm going to go more than one and a half passing tutties um, because I'm, I'm with you on the Kyle Shanahan MVP thing where when they get an opportunity, they're going to try and throw it into the end zone. And if I'm predicting two touchdowns for Brandon Ayuk, that means I'm, I'm going more than one and a half for Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, Smart. I think he's going to, I think he's going to punch one in as well. He did not score a touchdown last week. It's like, dude, can you do something? And so I think the 49ers <laughs> are going to try and get their money's worth and, and get him into the end zone one time on Sunday. So I'd like him to score a rushing or receiving touchdown. Debo Samuel going more than 14 and a half rushing yards because taking the more than on Debo rushing yards is just really fun, especially when he turns the corner and he covers the 14 and a half, uh, covers, you know, 15 yards in one run. Uh, that's that's the very best thing. So I like him to go more than 14 and a half there. And then I'm going to go James Conner more than 63 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. I think he's going to be featured heavily. I don't know if the 49ers have the horses to stop the Cardinals run game in the middle right now. And so I think we see a, a big day from James Conner and I like him to go more than 63 and a half rushing and receiving yards. Pricepicks.com like slash candlestick. Oh, go ahead. No, I I was just going to say, I like all those picks. Just don't come crying to me when Debo gets a pop pass that goes for receiving yards and not rushing yards. <laughs> <laughs> this is outrageous. No, uh, <laughs> prizepicks, prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Play along with us. Uh, use promo code candlestick to match your first deposit up to $100. That is prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to $100. That's all I got. I'm done. That's all I got, man. You you got a Santa hat on. You got a holiday party to get to. I'm ready to party. Um, I had a Hanukkah lunch today. We had uh we had some deli de- New York deli food shipped in from mm. Katz's. Not a sponsor, but oh, Katz's. Yeah. If you're listening and want a sponsor, boy, I can I can do that for you, Katz's Deli. Let me tell you, <laughs> um, need, they they need the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really could use the pub. One of the most famous delis and. In- in the country but uh yeah man so happy holidays to everybody uh enjoy the football there's gonna be football on saturday this weekend which is gonna be great and um yeah it's gonna be fun all right looking forward to subscribe it. to the youtube channel youtube.com slash at candlestick chronicles podcast or just search candlestick chronicles on youtube and we pop up or right there uh wherever you get your podcast subscribe rate and review as well we will see you guys after the game see ya